my channel and welcome if you're new here. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. If you're new to my channel, make sure you're subscribed and your bell's turned on so that you don't miss a single video. We have lots of great content, WW, calorie tips and tricks on this channel. So make sure you head over and join us. Today we are going to talk about 14 tips on how to break a plateau. This is a question that I get all the time. How do I break a weight loss plateau? So I'm going to share with you 14 tips today on how to do just that. So again, make sure you're subscribed. Give this video a thumbs up if you love these tips and tricks. And let's jump into 14 ways to break a weight loss plateau. throughout our weight loss journey, our healthy lifestyle journey, it is bound and determined that we are going to hit a plateau. Now this could be at the beginning of our journey, it could be midway, it could be at the very end, but it is bound and determined to happen. A lot of you reach out to me and ask me for my suggestions, my tips on how to break a plateau. So I wanted to share with you guys some really easy, maybe things that you didn't even think about, tips on how to do just that. So tip number one is cut back on the carbs. Now we definitely need carbs in our diet in order to have a well-rounded weight loss, healthy eating journey. But if you are stalled, maybe you are overeating the carbs. Take a look at your carbohydrate intake for the day and reduce it by 10 to 25% and see if that helps break your weight loss plateau. If we are decreasing our carbs, we're filling that gap with protein. And protein is a well-known way to lose weight. It's the one macronutrient that is so important on any weight loss journey. So if you are reducing your carbs and filling the gap with a little extra protein, that should definitely help with that weight loss plateau. Next is change it up. Change up your exercise frequency as well as the intensity. Our bodies get comfortable. And if we're doing the same exercise routine or the same exercises at the gym or the same classes at the gym over and over again, after four to six weeks, our body gets used to it. And we're not going to get the fat burn, the metabolic increase. We're not going to see the results from those exercises after that four to six week mark. So it's important to change up the exercises that you're doing. Add additional weight, add additional reps, completely take out one exercise and add in a new exercise. Maybe try out a new class at your local gym, one that you've never been to before. Now this doesn't mean that you can't continue to do your favorite exercises or the ones that you've seen success with. Just change it up. Take one away and add in something new or a couple away and add in a couple new and see if that really helps with that weight loss plateau. Also make sure that you are incorporating a resistance training program as well. Make sure that you're lifting some weights, taking advantage of the machines at your local gym. Make sure that you are adding some strength training to your workout as well. It's important to do cardio, but it is even more important when it comes to reshaping and firming up and breaking plateaus to add in some type of strength training. Research shows that people have a very large tendency to under estimate what they're eating, even underestimate what they're tracking. You go ahead and you pour yourself a bowl of cereal. Now, did you weigh and measure that bowl of cereal or are you just eyeballing what looks like a cup to you? Chances are your eyeballs are deceiving you and you are eating more than you are tracking or that you are assuming and thinking that you're eating. So it's really important to honestly track literally everything, every bite, lick or taste that goes into your mouth. Nothing passes your lips that doesn't get into your tracker. Also taking a good look at tracking calories and macronutrients can help break that plateau as well. Maybe you are eating way more carbs than you should. Maybe you're eating more sugar. Maybe you're not getting in enough protein and fiber. So double tracking or just tracking your calories and macros for a week or two is will give you valuable insight into your weight loss journey and whether or not that is hindering your weight loss and causing you to plateau. Just make sure that you're honestly tracking your food and literally everything that goes into your mouth because we grossly underestimate what we're eating. In fact, there was a study that was done in 2010 that showed that people believed that they ate 1200 calories a day, but when they actually tracked everything they ate, it was at least double that. So that will definitely not only cause a plateau, but could even cause a little bit of a weight gain. Number four is don't skimp on the protein. Eat the protein, my friends. 
protein, protein, protein. Like I mentioned, that is the number one macronutrient that contributes to weight loss. Not only does protein keep you full and satisfied, protein helps rebuild muscle. It also boosts calorie burning 20 to 30% more than carbohydrates and fats. The standard American diet should consist of about 30 to 35% of your daily caloric intake of protein. Now for me, you guys know that I follow Jordan Syatt's approach. I'll go ahead and link Jordan's channel down below for you where I actually take my goal weight times 0.7 to determine my protein goal for the day. Now when I am tracking, I am 100% looking at calories, protein, and points. The other macronutrients, carbohydrates and fat are secondary to me. I am all about hitting my protein goal because protein helps with muscle gain, muscle recovery, and helps keep you full and satisfied. Number five is manage your stress. Stress can be a big factor in weight gain and also a big factor in preventing weight loss. In addition to making us comfort eat or triggers food cravings, it also ups the amount of cortisol that our body produces. Too much cortisol can make weight loss extremely, extremely difficult. Cortisol wants us to store fat, tells our body to store fat, especially visceral fat, like around our organs and our midsection. So by being extra stressed, increasing that cortisol can really put a damper on your weight loss. So make sure that if you are feeling overly stressed out, that you are doing things that help eliminate that stress, taking deep breaths, putting yourself in a happy place, going on a walk, exercise really helps reduce stress because it puts our mind onto other things. Do whatever it takes for you to decrease that stress level, therefore decreasing cravings and decreasing the amount of cortisol that your body is producing. Number six is trying intermittent fasting. Now we've all heard about intermittent fasting. Basically what this is in a nutshell is you allow yourself a set eating window in a day, say eight to 10 hours. The rest of the 24 hour period you are fasting, which means that you are not eating. For me, I don't implement intermittent fasting. It's just not something that I've chosen to put into my lifestyle. Now, am I saying I would never do that? No, but at this point, I don't incorporate intermittent fasting. However, it is proven to help break a weight loss plateau. And the reason for that is by intermittent fasting and only having a set eating window, you generally consume less calories, which means that you're going to lose weight. Also, it does help break a plateau because it gets your body into a frame of of mind where it knows that it needs to burn through your energy while you're fasting because it's a window of food intake is very, very limited. I recommend if you are interested in intermittent fasting that you definitely do some research. You can just Google that and it'll come up with a ton of information. And I also recommend that you consult your local physician to make sure that that is something that will work within your lifestyle. Number seven, you may not want to hear to be honest, and that is avoiding alcohol. Although one alcoholic beverage, say a beer or a standard pour of wine contains only about 100 calories, there's zero nutritional value, so people tend to overdo the alcoholic beverages. Also, alcohol can loosen your inhibitions, which can cause you to overeat or even make food choices that aren't the healthiest or maybe food choices that you wouldn't have chose if alcohol wasn't involved. And what's more and probably even the biggest factor of alcohol is that it suppresses your body from burning fat and often leads to having a gut. You've heard the term bare belly. It is a real thing. So besides the fact that alcohol doesn't have any nutritional value, it's pretty calorie dense. It has about seven calories per gram, which is more than carbohydrates and protein. It just really doesn't do a whole lot for your body on the positive side. So if you find that you're in a plateau and that you're maybe even struggling to lose weight, try either cutting back or eliminating alcohol for a while and see if that helps. Number eight is eat more fiber. We as Americans do not eat enough fiber. It is a proven fact that our fiber consumption is far less than it should be. This is especially true with fiber that dissolves in liquid, what is also known as soluble fiber. Soluble fiber slows down the digestion process and makes us feel a lot more full and satisfied for a longer period of time. Although both soluble Soluble and insoluble fiber are beneficial for health. It is proven that soluble fiber really does help keep us full and satisfied and can contribute to better weight loss and also can help break a plateau when you up the amount of soluble fiber that you're consuming. So an example is a study that was conducted where someone following a standard American diet increased their fiber intake from 18 grams per day to over 30 grams per day. And the result of increasing that fiber led to 130 calories less 
that the body absorbed from the meals that they ate throughout the day. So fiber not only keeps you full and satisfied, but also helps your body not absorb all of the calories that you're consuming and creating fat. So definitely take a good hard look at the fiber that you're consuming daily and up that, up that substantially and see if that helps. Number nine is focus your fluids on water, coffee, and tea. Try to avoid sugary beverages, things such as regular pop, even diet pop and diet drinks like the diet ices and the vitamin waters of the world contain artificial sweeteners that your body really doesn't always know how to process and what to do with that can also lead you to crave real sugar and other sugary items. So make your fluid intake focus number one on water, black coffee and unsweetened tea. Coffee and tea both contain caffeine, which has shown to increase fat burning and boost your metabolic rate by up to 13%. So caffeine isn't a bad thing in moderation and by drinking coffee and tea and having those be the basis of the fluids that you're taking alongside water, that little bit of caffeine will definitely have some health benefits. And as we know, green tea has a lot of health benefits. There were some studies that were done that show that by consuming green tea, it helps with fat burning up to 17%. Now, whether this is true or not, who knows? There's conflicting information. But again, by consuming a lot of water, moderation of coffee and tea, you're going to see some benefits. You're going to stay hydrated. And by drinking water, it fills our belly so that we're not wanting to lean towards food. Number 10 is spread your protein out throughout the day. So it's not just all about how much protein you consume in a day, it's when and how much per meal of protein you're consuming within the day. Making sure that you're consuming protein with every meal allows your body to have TEF. TEF stands for thermic effect of food, which basically means that it increases your metabolism by consuming protein. Also by consuming protein with every meal, it's beneficial for weight loss as well as muscle retention. So it's important to make sure that all of your meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks all contain protein. It is recommended that you consume at least 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal for your main three meals of the day, and then fill the gaps in with snacks with your remaining protein, your goal for the day, and make sure that by the end of the day that you can check off whatever goal you've set for yourself as far as protein, you can check that off and also be confident in knowing that you ate protein with every meal. So if you're going to have crackers for a snack, pair that with some type of protein, like maybe a slice of cheese, a cheese stick, some cottage cheese, some yogurt, you get the drift. Just make sure that you have protein with every meal. Number 11 is get plenty of sleep. It is so important that you are sleeping enough, not only when you're in weight loss, but also when you are at a plateau. In fact, not getting enough sleep is one of the leading contributors of a stall in your weight loss. Not getting enough sleep can lower your metabolic rate and drive the hormones in your body that trigger us to be cravy and snacky and to overeat. One study shows that healthy adults who only slept four to five hours per night actually decrease their resting metabolic rate by 2.6%. So that means that you can eat less food and continue to maintain or lose weight. So we don't want to make it so that our body has to have less food in order to be successful on our weight loss journey or even on maintenance. So to support weight loss and overall health, you should aim for seven to eight hours of sleep per night. Now, in the event that you have a night or two that you're lacking in sleep, make sure that you're making that up within that same week so that your body can adjust and so you can keep your metabolism going. And maybe, just maybe, getting that little extra bit of sleep will break your weight loss plateau. Number 12 is be as active as possible. Although working out is important, there's a lot of factors throughout your day that can influence whether or not you lose weight, maintain weight, or get on a weight loss plateau. For example, your metabolic rate increases with simple things that you do every day like fidgeting, getting up and down, standing versus sitting, walking around your house, just the movement of putting a load of laundry in the washer, transferring it to a dryer, and then putting it away in the closet. This is known as NEAT, which stands for non-exercise activity activity, thermogenesis, or NEAT, N-E-A-T. So one study found taking NEAT into account that the average person's metabolic rate increased by 54% by sitting and fidgeting and a whopping 94% by standing and fidgeting. One really simple way to increase your NEAT is to stand more than you're sitting. That's why they have things like standing desks and exercise ball chairs because that little bit of extra movement throughout the day or just standing versus sitting will really help contribute to a higher NEAT. Another study found that someone who stands versus sits the last 
few hours of their workday burned an additional 200 calories more than the person who sat at their desk that last few hours of their workday. So really focus on increasing your non-exercise daily activity. Spend a little extra time standing versus sitting and you're going to see some results. Number 13 is eat veggies with every meal. So this goes hand in hand with eating protein with every meal. Vegetables are the ideal food for weight loss. They are generally low in calories and carbohydrates, but they are high in fiber and the other nutrients that our body needs. Studies have shown that diets high in vegetables definitely contributed to higher success of weight loss, higher success of maintenance, and less likely to be on a weight loss plateau. So make sure that you're incorporating a little bit of veg with every single meal. Pop a little bit of spinach into your eggs or your omelet for breakfast. Make sure that you're having a side of vegetables with lunch and dinner, and maybe even incorporating some vegetables into a snack, some carrots with some dip or some hummus. Just make sure that you're mindfully consuming vegetables with every meal. And number 14 is my favorite, my holy grail, and that is do not rely on the scale alone. Do not let that box dictate your life. Rather than weight loss, your goal is actually fat loss. Thank you, Jordan Syatt, for reinforcing this. We are not on a weight loss journey. We are on a fat loss journey. Our goal is to lose fat. And when we lose fat, we're going to see the scale decrease. When you're working out regularly, chances are you're gaining muscle, which is denser than fat and takes up less room in the body. The myth surrounding muscle weighs more than fat is true. Muscle does not weigh more than fat. Pound of muscle weighs the same as a pound of fat. However, muscle is much more dense and takes up a lot less room in your body. Therefore, the more muscle you have, not only the more calories you burn, but the leaner you look. And remember, if the scale's not moving, chances are it could be the food that you're eating. You could be retaining water. You could have had a little bit of extra sodium and you could just be retaining water. And that eventually within a day or two, you should that dissipate and that number on the scale should move. As women, our dietary choices can greatly affect how much water our body retains, which can then greatly affect that number that we see on the scale. So even though weighing yourself is important on a weight loss journey, even when you're on a plateau, it's not the be all end all. Make sure that you're checking how your body feels in your clothes, taking your measurements, seeing your visual body changing in the mirror. Those things, those non-scale victories, in my opinion, are even more important than that number on the scale. Slow and steady with weight loss wins the race. So don't be discouraged if that number is declining slowly or even staying the same for a while. Remember, there are other positive changes happening in your body that eventually you'll be able to see and that maybe are even more important than that number on the scale. So the bottom line, weight loss is hard. Losing weight, losing fat is hard. It's frustrating, it makes you wanna cry, it makes you angry, but the bottom line is if you stick with it, you do the right thing, you track your food, you nourish your body, eventually the weight is going to come off. Calories in versus calories out, you're going to see weight loss. Even when you're on a weight loss plateau, by changing things up a little bit, maybe implementing some of these 14 tips that I shared with you, eventually you will break the weight loss plateau. You just have to be strong and hang in there and don't let it discourage you. So hang in there, my friends. Don't get discouraged. Keep doing what you're doing. Make a few changes and I bet you'll see that scale move. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope that these 14 tips really helped you out. I'll make sure that I type these tips out down in the description box so that you can copy and paste them or print them out so that you have them handy when you're feeling frustrated on your weight loss plateau. If you're new or you are not subscribed to my channel, hit the little subscribe button. That way you can be part of this amazing community here on YouTube. I upload most days of the week and I share tons of tips and tricks with you so you don't wanna miss out. Give this video a big thumbs up if these tips that I shared with you are beneficial and helpful for you. It means so much to me and supports my channel, so thank you so much. And of course, feel free to leave comments down below, any additional questions, even feedback or tips that you have on how to break a plateau. Thank you so much, you guys, and of course I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Funny how the story goes, little hope but bigger dreams